It's been two years since I graduated in 2021 and soon I won't be able to call myself a new grad. So I thought of making this video before I fall out of that window. I started working as a full-time software engineer soon after my graduation without any gaps. So in this video, I wanna share my exact path as a recent graduate who's been working for the past two plus years now and share my experience of how I managed to transition from being a student to a full-time software engineer. At the end, I will also share a mistake that you should avoid and a lesson that I learned uh, from my experience that helped me increase my salary by 50%. So if you're in the same boat, let's get to it. Little backstory, I did a four years engineering degree here in Prague at the Czech Technical University. And my degree was kind of like trying to be everything and anything, like almost choosing science in your high school where you get to go for higher grad studies in medicine, engineering, law, or economics for that matter. So first three years of my engineering was theoretical fundamentals of mechanical engineering. And the fourth and final year, I got my major in IT and automation. It was my final year that really clicked in me that I liked the software side of things. Even though I was exposed to both software and hardware throughout my degree, I had some very good courses like Java, database and knowledge systems, uh, embedded systems, uh, digital electronics, and computer science courses. So I really liked the automation part of my degree when it involved programming. And that's how I decided I should take this path. And as most of you already watching this know, this also pays way better. And even in my high school, 11th and 12th grade, my minor was in computer science. So it all worked out at the end. So the first step in my journey was to get an internship. So if I look back, I can probably pinpoint to this single fact to starting my career right after graduation. So during my final year, I started applying for internships quite extensively and I was getting rejected from many, but these rejections didn't bother me too much because it's not like I was applying with too much experience and was getting rejected. I was just a student or someone who's about to be a graduate. So rejection was just part of the whole process. And in my final semester, during my final year, I managed to get an internship with IBM for a junior developer role. So I can't stress this enough if you're watching this as a student or someone who's about to graduate. There are a lot of companies, including corporates and startups that has university internship programs that are looking to hire only students that are in their final years or students who are about to graduate that year. And it's a massive leverage in my opinion, because once you graduate and get out of that student status, you're applying for roles where hundreds of other people would apply with way more experience and better CV than you. So this is the only time where you'll be competing with people similar to you with uh, similar levels of experience and uh, student status. So use it. You need to leverage this opportunity where every other candidate is a student. Showing that little more enthusiasm, you can get through the door. And getting that first internship really helps you to land that first job which gets me to my next step in my journey, which is landing that first job. So soon after my internship, IBM ended up extending a full-time job offer for me. So this wasn't a straightforward process where I was just graduating and they ended up extending a full-time job offer. But in my term of internship, including me, there were 20 plus other interns and I was the only one who got offered a full-time job offer right after it. Now, I would like to say it happened because I was the smartest among them, but no, that wasn't the case. I only got that offer because I asked for it. There is this old saying, only the crying baby gets the milk, and it's actually true in real life. So that's exactly what I did. My internship was three months and towards the end, I had this realization that I'm gonna be graduating soon and I need to start looking for full-time job offers. So what I did was I started 
texting my coach, my mentor, everyone who I knew at the company at that time, and even did a global search on Slack to find developers who has their titles marked as uh, software engineers or developers, and started reaching out to them. And I started sending them simple texts like, hey, I'm an intern, I have experience in so-and-so, and I will graduate in the coming months, is there a full-time role you think that will fit for me? So after several messages later, one of the senior managers replied back to me with a response, hey, I might have something for you. Why don't you send me your CV? And that's all it took. You always have an upper hand when you're an intern and working inside the organization as opposed to someone who's applying from outside. I was offered this full-time job offer right after graduation. So I guess the moral of the story is to get an internship, no matter what the pay is, even if it's an unpaid internship, uh, I would say if you see a potential career in there, go for it. I would say even if the internship is unpaid, just go for it if you see a potential chance of starting your career there. I know this is not gonna vibe with every one of you, but if you see an offer that is too hard to reject, just go for it. And while you're doing your internship, uh, try to create meaningful connections, have a good LinkedIn profile, and don't forget, only the crying baby gets the milk. So one and a half years into my journey of having a full-time job offer after graduation i ended up switching companies because i got a better offer from other competitor so now i want to talk about the single mistake and the lesson i learned from this transition of being a student to a full-time software engineer so once you have that initial full-time job offer your food is in the door and everything from there is up to you on how you want to navigate your offer and your career. So the single mistake I made initially when I got the job offer is that I did not negotiate my salary. In hindsight, I 100% should have negotiated it. But at that time, uh, when you get an offer extended, you don't want to jinx anything by going really high. So I ended up accepting that offer. But if you get to a similar position where you have an extended offer, from my experience, the truth is that the company needs you as much as you need them. So you don't lose anything by negotiating. So always try to negotiate that initial offer. And the single most valuable lesson that I learned is that once you have that one year or one plus years of experience in your bag, start looking. Your first job is likely an entry job, but your second and third job is not. At that point, you're already an experienced hire, so you can always go for higher salaries and better roles. And that's exactly what I did after my first job. And one year and few months into my job, I switched companies because I got a better offer from a competitor. So this part is totally up to you. But one thing I have learned uh, from my experience and the people around me is that when you switch jobs, you always get a higher raise than the job that you're likely staying. And most likely it will also be a different challenge. And at that point, you will also be learning how to interview as an experienced person rather than being a student. So this tactic has helped me get over 50% raise uh, from my starting job just because I was willing to interview for other roles and go for a better position in a different company. So to sum it up, if you're a new grad or someone who's about to graduate, apart from the things I mentioned, if you focus on creating meaningful connections, ask for what you want in terms of salary or roles, Apply even if you're not ready because you don't lose anything. Like I said, only the crying baby gets the milk. So just ask away. If you just focus on these few things, you will be way ahead of the rest. I hope you got something out of my journey here. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have already been, thanks for watching. I will talk to you in the next one. Cheers.